So Ryan, what's on your radar? Well, the scientist at the center of the lab leak controversy is a man named Peter Dajak. He's the head of an organization called EcoHealth Alliance, and he's gotten tens of millions of dollars over the years for research into coronaviruses and other pathogens. Since 2005, he's been working closely with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Starting in 2014, his organization with the NIH funding collaborated on research there that involved gain-of-function research. We also know that in 2018, Dajak applied to DARPA for a grant to fund a project that would work to insert furin cleavage sites into the spikes of SARS-related viruses. Now, that research was never funded, but we don't know for sure whether any of it was ever performed. It matters because the furin cleavage site found in the virus that created this pandemic is what's so unique about it, and it's what scientists initially flagged as evidence that it was likely made in a lab. Now, in early February 2020, Anthony Fauci and Francis Collins, the head of the NIH, got on a conference call with leading scientists and were told by many of them that the origin seemed likely to be a lab and the furin cleavage site was a key tell. The day after the call, as we've reported here before, Dr. Jeremy Farrar sent around notes, including to Fauci and Collins, summarizing what some of the scientists had said on the call. Redacted versions of those notes were obtained by The Intercept, and House Republicans subsequently obtained and released unredacted versions. One scientist, Mike Farzan, said this, for instance, quote, he is bothered by the furin site and has a hard time explaining that as an event outside the lab, though there are possible ways in nature, but highly unlikely. So a few days later, the scientists were told not to explore the lab leak theory, lest they create grist for conspiracy theorists. Instead, Fauci publicly ridiculed the notion. Peter Dajak played a leading role tamping down discussion of the lab leak theory by secretly organizing a group of scientists to send a letter to The Lancet debunking the idea. Now, at The Intercept, we've repeatedly reached out to Dajak. At one point, he responded through a press secretary, but generally hasn't responded at all. In late February, he finally agreed to speak to reporters Sharon Lerner and Mara Fistendahl, who've been doggedly on this story since the beginning. So the full interview is worth a read, but I want to highlight two exchanges that appear to contradict each other on their face and really go to the heart of the question. So Sharon and Mara ask, quote, did EcoHealth Alliance or the Wuhan Institute of Virology through its partnership with EcoHealth Alliance ever insert a furin cleavage site into a bat coronavirus genetic sequence? He says, of course we did not do that. I really don't understand how that could be a question at this point. It's beyond the pale. That's not in our plans, and it's not in any of our reports. So of course we didn't do that. All right, so that's pretty unequivocal. It's beyond the pale. Of course we didn't do that. Now, again, whether they inserted a furin cleavage site is a key question, because if they did, that could explain how the virus came to look and act like it does. But then Sharon and Mara then asked the logical follow-up. But isn't it the case that you submitted a grant proposal to DARPA to do so? And he said, we did submit a proposal to DARPA. I've not checked through the one that's online that it's the correct document. What I do know is it was widely reported that DARPA rejected that because there were concerns about safety issues. That is absolutely untrue. The document that allegedly is DARPA's response, their review of our proposal, I've never seen that before. It was never sent to us. I don't know if it's real. DARPA had a process by which people who didn't get funded could do an interview with them to find out why they didn't get funded, so I did that. Never once did they mention any concerns or issues around safety. Never once did they mention gain of function. The reason they told us it was rejected was because the amount we asked for was too much for them. They couldn't afford it. They actually encouraged us to resubmit in different ways. We then had protracted conversations with them about funding specific parts of it. They liked the proposal, unquote. Now, a DARPA source has since confirmed the document's authenticity to Project Veritas on the record, so there's no doubt anymore that it's authentic, and Dajak doesn't claim it is, it is or isn't. So in two questions, he's gone from saying the research is beyond the pale to saying DARPA liked it, but it was too expensive. So the next question is, of course, was any of the work described in that proposal completed prior to its submission? and this is Sharon and Mara, we were told by multiple sources that when you submit a grant, that at least some of the work would have been done, unquote. And that's the critical question. And it's one we haven't gotten an answer to yet. We know the grant wasn't funded, but lots of work happens outside of grant funding, as scientists do research to see which projects would be best to apply for full funding for. So Dajak replied, 
When you write a grant proposal and propose to do a new line of research, which is what we did, we would not be doing that research before we submit the proposal. That's not how it works, unquote. But lots of scientists have said that, in fact, that is exactly how it works. That it's very unusual to apply for funding for a line of research you haven't even remotely experimented with. So they pressed further, quote, when we asked you if you had ever inserted a furin cleavage site to a coronavirus, you responded with outrage, but that is what was described in the DARPA proposal. And Dajak responded, no, what you said is, did we insert a furin cleavage site? And what I said was, of course not. If we had done that work with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, it would have been published by now. It would have been made public in our reports to the NIH. The DARPA proposal was not funded, therefore the work was not done, simple. Okay, but again, it's not that simple. And then the next back and forth, he allows that perhaps a colleague of his in North Carolina did some of this work. But if you acknowledge that you proposed to DARPA to insert a furin cleavage site, and he says, I refute that that was the goal of the DARPA proposal. The idea was not to insert a furin cleavage site in a virus to see what happens. That's not what was proposed. The proposal was to look for those polybasic cleavage sites, that's another word for furin, in nature because we knew that that, was the, that has the potential to make a virus more able to infect people and move from person to person. If we found mutations around that polybasic cleavage site that looked like it could be evolvable, the idea was then that Ralph Barrick's lab at UNC would do some work to see how evolvable that site was. So that work never happened. The proposal was not funded, unquote. And so in later exchanges with The Intercept reporters, he says he doesn't know if Ralph Barrick did that work, but he doubts it. Now, the interview began with Dajak calling it all beyond the pale, but halfway into it, he started making a rousing defense of it. So the reporters told him, quote, some virologists were dismayed to see the insertion of furin cleavage sites in this proposal. I don't know why any, and he says, I don't know why anyone would be dismayed at that because furin cleavage sites were first researched in the influenza viruses. And it's well known that that's something you should look for if you're interested in viral virulence factors. Second, there's actually a published paper from way before our proposal was submitted, way before the pandemic, where a group actually inserted a furin cleavage site into SARS-CoV-1. So we were right to look for that. And I think the proposal stands as a valid and actually quite predictive effort to understand the risk of viruses. You've got to look at the big picture of why we do this research. We're not doing it as a sort of academic interest. What would happen if you put a cleavage site here? No, this work is done to say what viruses are there out there in the wild that have the potential to emerge in people and can we do something to stop them, develop vaccines, develop therapies, stop people making contact with those animals, unquote. Now, the earlier experiment he's talking about only involved the spike protein, not the full virus. So there was actually no risk of it escaping, which he must know. And, and, so, and so Kim, he starts with, this is outrageous, beyond the pale yeah. that we would do research like this, and then finishes with, it's really important research. Yeah. It should have been funded. Well, and the best point that you make about this is people don't just apply for grants on theoretical. They have to have at least done something in order to then say, now we need millions of dollars. I mean, they're asking for a lot of money. And this is just the same principle for business. If you're going to go and look for a, a venture capitalist or a funder of some kind, you have to have something prototype to show them. Some. Right, <laughs> some kind of prototype to say, look, we've, we, we really think this would work and this is why we think this would work. And so we think you should invest all of this massive amount of money into that. So so that's where it gets really scary is that if they were just if they were just looking into this to in order to get the funding then maybe they wouldn't have had all the checks that you normally would get when you have full funding because then you could put all of that into place so you're kind of playing around I actually thought the most Weasley thing he says is at the very end when he starts defending it and say you know we do all this research you know not just just not just to experiment, but because it's important because we're gonna come up with all these things to combat these mutant viruses we're inventing. But there's no, what? There, like, there's right. no explanation there for why any of this research is necessary. Right. Like, the, the vaccines we developed were not because we had done right. that research. The, the same thing with the therapeutic. Therapies, we, yeah. we, we, we didn't learn anything, and he doesn't even really explain what we're supposed to learn. He's like, we're doing this to learn more about these really scary viruses we're potentially creating. Well, what are you learning other than right. you can get a lot of people killed with them? Yeah. Right. Yes, no, <laughs> we definitely learned that. And the the... Throwing it to Ralph Barrick at UNC was also fascinating to me. It's like, so in other words, he's saying, we were gonna look for these furin cleavage sites in nature, and then we were gonna send them to Ralph, 
and yeah. Ralph was going to mess around with them at UNC. And, yeah. well, and then they're like, well, did Ralph do that? He's like, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I don't think so. Yeah. You know, and what this does is. We do a little better than that, maybe. Well, ever since we started talking about the lab leak theory, this was like in early March of 2020, uh, when that started to really kind of crop up, or late March in 2020, um, the Chinese actually were starting to point the finger back at the United States and said, don't blame, uh, you know, look at your lab right. as well in North Carolina. Don't look at just us. If you're, gonna, if you're going to implicate us, then we can implicate you. So everybody should be investigated on this. Right. Because there's a lot of potential sources where this could have come from. So now it sounds like like maybe we do need to be looking at everything right and so both sides were like you know what never mind right and that's what they're doing <laughs> let's not look at Wuhan let's not look at North Carolina yeah yeah let's find the bat oh we couldn't find the bat never mind right don't worry about it I, I don't think anyone who is remotely even like one percent curious about gain of function and lab leak would be put at ease by that interview no <laughs> that was that was not setting anyone at ease that was that was alarming in that, fact there's and there's a ton of great stuff in it because they, they 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 know this issue back and uh yeah. back and front and back and so it was it was Nice to see them kind of go back and forth. They didn't let him get away with anything. Yeah, no, yeah. good, good yeah. job to your reporters. Yeah, really. really good job. Yeah. But now we have more to investigate. <laughs> <laughs> more to be yes, we do. <laughs> more to be yeah. very, very afraid of. <laughs> Who we got next? Who's doing a radar next? I think I it's know. me. I think I'm. All right, Kim. Yeah. Looking forward to yours.